We're happy to have you back to Think Tech Hawaii's Human Humane Architecture, which we're broadcasting live once again from the opposite ends of the world, me near uh, Würzburg, Germany, and you to Soto back in Honolulu, Hawaii. Yes, here I am with an airplane flying over, making a lot of noise at the moment. Well, we're kind of glad they're fly again, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, um, but uh, us all being in lockdowns, more or less, we're trying to project into the post-pandemic production future. And this is our volume two of our uh, TOD uh, graciously gentrified Gerrit's Reed. And we're looking into a German town that has done um, urban densification in a way that we thought is worth sharing and maybe get some clues for how we could do that when we get the the heavy rail going and uh, get developments around the particular train stations, which is what one calls transit oriented uh, development, TOD. So let's go to the first slide and recap a little bit what we did last uh, week, DeSoto. Well, we talked about this little town, which is located right at the end of, or it's one town away from the end of the main train into Munich. And what they have done is redevelop their downtown. They've already finished one project and they're starting their the other project is under construction. These to us seem very small and low rise, but this isn't a small, this isn't a very big town. Um, and we're going to be looking at, first of all, the one that's already been completed, but more at the what we can anticipate for the second one which has an interesting background as to how it's been developed and which you just looked into and we'll find out about. Yeah. And the one that's currently under construction with the cranes that we showed last time is called BG, BGZ. And here we're happy. I was digging this out from somewhere fishing in the net that shows us they have uh, terraced lanais. We're happy to see that. We would like to see more of that in, in Hawaii because as you always say here, I wouldn't be able to sit on that lanai right now unless I have my heavy winter coat on, right? Because we don't have a 12 month summer, you know, endless summer. We don't have that summer ended here. So, <laughs> definitely. So let's go to the next slide, which is uh, how we uh, left last time. And now we know we did more research that the building that this gentleman is sitting in and under is actually BGZ. And the G in that basically stands for Genossenschaft, which is co-op. So it's different than most of the developments in Honolulu, which are developer based, and they try to make a profit and then walk away. The Genossenschaft, the co-op is basically members based. So everyone basically chips in and becomes part of the client, of the developer. But the project that um, has recently been completed, we see in the distance there is a different one. And that one we want to take a closer look and let's go to the next slide and walk around it and let's share observations to Soto. What's well, on the ground floor? Okay, well, this is interesting and we're going to see a, a map of what actually is in this particular place. But on the ground, what we would call the ground floor and what in Germany is called four zero, I presume, mm -hmm. yeah, um, right. is, uh, and this has three levels, by the way, which we'll see in just a second. But we see here that there are commercial developments. So there's retail, there are people on the right buying flowers, which I presume is in front of the supermarket or the grocery store. And then there's a small restaurant in the center where the young adults, males or teenagers think that they are impervious to anything. So they're not wearing their masks because they don't think COVID could do anything to them. But as you pointed out, the girl on the bicycle on the far left is wearing her mask. So she is more sensible than they are. And the two older people on the right are also wearing masks. And I think Germany is in a tighter lockdown now than it was when you took these photographs. Exactly. That's right. That's correct. And what we see maybe is not that shockingly new to us. This is what the developers call uh, oh, we're doing mixed use, right? So we're doing retail on the ground floor and we're doing, you know, living on the floors above, which actually isn't that innovative. It's, you know, it's uh, has been the model in many cultures, including the European and then Americans inherited that when they were like on their wagon trains building their, their cities. The women who ran the saloon lived upstairs. So it's not such a new thing, but it's good to reintroduce that for sure. 
and especially if you're providing the mercantile infrastructure so can people can walk down and walk their dinner or lunch up there instead of driving it so that's good but as you indicated let's walk up there because there's more surprises up there so let's go to the next slide and this is your weekly German lesson because you took some closer look on these German signs here. And what did you find? Well, the directional signs show that there are three levels and the ground, the, the level of underground, which is referred to as minus one, which again is a strange concept for us, is parking. On what we would say the ground level, which is referred to here as zero, we had, as we just saw, the retail. And then on the floors above that, in addition to the housing, there also are a variety of tenants, and those include the some offices of this town itself, so there's some government offices there. There are some doctors in there, and then there is a, there's a bank, there's a people's bank, as you said, and I can't remember what the other um, functions are, but this is, it's offices, but it's also government, so it's not purely a commercial development, and I think that we'll get into why that is, because this was a redevelopment of the town itself. So they needed to accommodate these other things in addition to just providing housing and retail and park. Yeah, no, absolutely. And it gives us a first clue. It's actually the players involved actually must uh, believe in the project that much that they actually move in. So there's the bank and the real estate part of the bank, which I believe are financing. Uh, some uh, the project itself and maybe the people renting or buying in there. There's even the city with a department of social and family services having moved in there. So that, that gives us a first clue that it's a really participatory kind of process and project. And let's look into the into it closer on the next slide because we're now up on that elevated plinth uh, with that circulation. We're looking, we're seeing the crane for a GBZ2 and we're seeing GBZ1 just there in the middle of the picture. But now let's walk on that plinth and basically get to a surprise. Let's go to the next slide. Why is that yeah. a surprise? And, and there's our surprise and I confirmed with you that this is not at ground level. This is actually on what we would consider to be the first floor and it's on the roof of the supermarket and the retail and the, and the uh, restaurant that we just saw in the previous or previous pictures a little bit ago. So this is a whole landscaped area, which is available for the residents and as well for the tenants as well, the, the people who are in the offices. So it's up on essentially the roof and yet it gives you the feeling that you're on the ground because it's vegetated. Yeah, and that looks very jungly by the way, right? Yeah, it does. And for that, Purpose. Let's go back to Hawaii for one second, which gets us to the next slide. Is that in Hawaii? No, that's not here. That's that. <laughs> that that's but it, doesn't it look like everything in Hawaii should be? We got yeah. we got large yeah. lanais. Yeah. This is actually facing south, so you got the overhang, the shading. You can basically live outdoors. And there was, I was too shy to ask them. Didn't want to be a paparazzi, but there was actually a Vietnamese immigrant family living on that ground floor and doing beautiful um, gardening outside there and enjoying the outdoors. So it really, um, we will see later on that I took the emerging generation out there and they were saying, yeah, this looks like, aren't you back in Germany? Are you sure? Are you back in Hawaii? In a better Hawaii that, that you know, that most of what we unfortunately know from Hawaii that's recently been developed, which is all hermetic and invasive, but this yeah. looks very tropical exotic once again, these lanai's are not usable at this moment of yeah. the year anymore. Yeah. So go to the next slide and look at it a little bit more in detail here. Uh, and this, is, this is interesting. You pointed out that these planter boxes that contain all this vegetation, first of all, are equipped with benches. And that's something that we're familiar with here too. But what is unfamiliar is, and I was, I'd confirm with you, Underneath these benches, there are light sources. So these function also as lighting for the outdoors. And it's very cleverly inserted into the structures for to hold the plants and for people to sit on. So that's something that I we rarely would see here that I think is very clever and it looks really nice too. Yeah. And if you would if you would imagine that on Fourth Street Mall, 
and you're sunnering there in the evening, that would be certainly nice uh, to see. Let's go to the next slide. And while, let's look at the backdrop of, of the jungle. And you made some interesting observations. Maybe the next slide is already the better one to look at. How you looked at that interesting layer of the threshold that is not so familiar to you, right? Correct. So what we see here is this building has got sort of two levels of outdoor spaces for the people who live there. First, there are deeper lanais like what we would be expecting here, but there also is a sort of a shallow one. And to access that, to get out to where that railing is, and you can see this in the picture on the left, there are these unusual door slash window combinations, which we do not have in the United States. The window that you can see open can tilt inwards at the top. So that's for ventilation. But as Martin has described to me, you can also close it and open it with hinges like it's a door. So you've got a multi-purpose use of this big pane of glass to be able to get out onto that very shallow small lanai if you choose to, or you can just close it off or you can open it up for ventilation, which is really versatile and something we should emulate here. Yeah, and next slide is looking at it again in a more elevational view, uh, holding the camera up. And you see this interesting layering of these two uh, shields almost of a threshold. The outer one basically being the, the balustrades and the inner one being the, the thermal threshold that's composed and comprised of opaque panels. Because again, we're in temperate climates, we need that. In Hawaii, these might want to be vertical louvers that you can open and close, but here where it gets cold, there's there's uh, really sufficient insulation uh, between that one. And then I go to the next slide, which um, I went out to try to find a floor plan and shame on me, I, I couldn't find one, but I found this instead, which is giving us a clue of, because we're looking for the plan in order to judge, is it for families? Is it for single people? And here you see like dinkies double income we don't see any kids so we have to assume there aren't any but they're doing something that we think everyone should do in honolulu basically eat and dine on their lanais and uh we, if we go to the next slide we see i found an earlier version an earlier rendering that actually saw the lanais being even more apparent but apparently they were thinking more about the privacy issue and then they were pulling more opaque parts of that continuous balustrade band over where there is a lanai. So when you're sitting on the lanai, you're not being looked at entirely. You can hide some precious body parts basically behind that kind of balustrade, which is the thing that's very familiar to me with these soon being back to the Waikiki Grand. There's actually the lower part is opaque, is concrete. And then you got a horizontal steel guardrail. So when you're sitting on a lounge chair, you can look out, but no one can look at you. Very cleverly designed by Ernest Hara in that case. So let's go to the next slide and do uh, credit to the dear colleague. This is uh, the, uh, the architect, Mr. Kerbaum. And the difference between the, the early version and the second one is that he kind of soft edged the corners and, and certain details of it. And he seems to be into that as I found this other work here. But the next slide um, is more important because here the architecture is more boxy again. And this is almost hard to believe is, is more stuff that he proposes for that still pretty small town of Garrett's Reed. So he's continuing to think big and he's more urban um, densification and renewal development proposals. Uh, let's go to the next slide and, and, and look um, into the project more in detail and we were saying, you know, what's really critical in Honolulu is like keeping yourself cool, right? We're looking behind you and you were saying, you know, it's relatively cool now, but it's starting to be winter, so it's okay. But still, you still got the jealousies open and I hear the birds singing and the dogs having fun hearing the birds, right? So um, uh, in, in Germany, it's either freaking cold as now or it can be really hot in Germany as well. And for that, you got it all in place. You got the lanais set back there shading where there's no lanai and the described by you kind of French uh, floor to ceiling door. Um, you basically have retractable aluminum jealousy shading 
that are basically um, retracting in this, uh, even on the, on, the, on the ground floor here in this uh, horizontal dark line. And these, these verticals are basically the tracks where they, where they run. And then you got vegetation in front of it, which is softening it and also helping to keep it, to keep it cool. So again, um, that being recognized somewhere uh, in, a, in a very temperate climate, we should have all that in the tropical climate for sure, right? And next slide as we should have what we see on this picture here, right? That, that well, should be the standard in Honolulu. Yeah, and I think one of the things that strikes me that's interesting is that there are exterior walkways in a cold climate. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. as you pointed out, if that's the case and you don't have an interior hallway to get access to apartments, then you've got to have the thermal barrier, as you described mm -hmm. it, on the exterior of where your front door is. So that means that to keep the cold out and the snow, when it snows, you have to have the insulation around your front door and all your exterior windows because they're not protected by the exterior of the building the way they would be in an interior uh, hallway. Yeah, exactly. And I know from having walked it that before we got to the courtyard, you actually go through the lobby, which has the staircases, the main staircase and the elevators. So you're basically having an access to your unit, even your commercial unit, which this is not a residential one, but commercial unit. You have your main access to them from that main um, basically foyer. But here, uh, so this is extra, this is extra benefit. And I'm, I'm sure there are some doors so you can maybe sneak out of the back door when the meeting gets too crazy or you're late or something like that. But uh, you also see the just described uh, additional uh, aluminum jealousy shading. So we can assume that this orientation might actually not be south where the overhang would shade, but it might be face either tricky west or east where we know the sun is so low, so no overhang would, would, would help you. So they recognize that. So once you've got the setting sun, actually we know that and we will see it in a couple of pictures here, the sun is low and will basically bake you behind that glass. So they just added that. So it's like a no brainer to say by climatic performance. And we remember that from one of the construction sign banners that there were prodding themselves, the BGZ developments of environmentally friendliness. And so obviously this project was doing that as well. But you are covered from the rain for sure. And whenever it snows, you got to do some snow shoving. But again, that facade would be just applicable as it is for Hawaii, right? It would work just fine all year round. You can walk in the dry whenever it rains, which it does at times, and you're gonna stay cool behind. So it's kind of surprising, if not to say shocking, that something that is designed for such a different climate would work just as well. And you, of course, you wouldn't have to make this fixed glazing in Hawaii, where we say, you know, maybe, maybe less glazing. So this, the threshold could be, could be more tropical, but basically the principles could be applied just as well uh, to Hawaii. So let's go to the next slide and look at it even closer because unfortunately in more commercial developments, uh, the closer you get, the less interesting it gets and the more trashy the architecture gets. And in good architecture, it has always been the case and will always be the case, the opposite case that the closer you get, the finer it gets. And here again, the, the balustrade guardrail where they were intending to have that steel profile run, you know, uh, run across in exactly the same oh. width that made them basically notch out that, that steel, which is quite an effort, you know, that's, but that's intentional. So again, the project wants to be as good as it is as a whole in its uh, bits and pieces. And let's look at more example of that. And the next one was surprising you too, right? Yeah, this is the railing that goes down to, this is the stairway and the railing of the stairway that goes down to the parking level, which is underground. And what you pointed out, which I didn't even see till you said it, is that there's again, lighting on the bottom incorporated into the railing itself. So there's an LED strip inside and the lighting is provided by that little strip of lights, which means you don't have to have separate lights, which means it's all part of the integrated thing that you use to get downstairs to get to your car. I thought that was very clever. And it's also smart because 
that's where you need the light. You need the light down where your feet are so that you can see where you're walking to get downstairs and upstairs safely. Yeah, and when we step back, we see that situation here. When we go to the next slide, um, we see that situation more. And again, uh, this is something that probably, you know, you would have to argue with uh, as far as, as you said, as far as maintenance with a custodians, with a developer, saying, oh, is this really working with the code people? Because this is just pure glass, right? This is butt joint, this is structural glazing. So this is really top notch and kind of high end. And, and they were believing, they must have been believing that's the way to go. And so there's a really high standard of, of detailing and quality. Uh, we have also, what you pointed out, which I did not see when I first looked at this picture, it is protected on the top by a sheet of glass. So there isn't an, a separate structure for a canopy or a roof. You yeah. walk down and you've got a glass roof over you. So essentially you're descending in through a glass box that's up at sidewalk level to get down to where you are getting to your car. Exactly. And speaking of that, let's get to the next slide, which is our uh, European PI and Twingo mobile here on the way to drive back home. And it's once again, stepping back and, and seeing that new project from a distance again. Well, I have to admit, you know, even though I'm um, kind of an expert and, and an informed and interested citizen, I, I guess I have to say probably the least, but even I was suspicious, you know, of like this kind of out of scale, development and but all things considered what we walk through looking at it from all angles it makes a lot of sense and it's it's actually a very it's actually a very friendly development and so if what we see cut off on the on the left is when we go to the next slide is that town hall that we introduced there's a beer garden you know that interested you for various reasons of that partying basement uh, mostly <laughs> that tradition, that German tradition. And, and there is very fine attention to detail uh, to that building for sure, historically with these wooden shutters, with your favorite uh, geranium, you know, planter boxes and, and that little tower there. But then next slide, um, again, uh, kind of evolving, which we talk about a lot. If you have a tradition, a good tradition, you should evolve that. And today we have bigger issues and housing is one of the biggest issues we're facing worldwide for sure in Honolulu and here as well. So it's catering to that. So you can see the same philosophy, the same mentality basically transformed into, into a new era, into a new time. And uh, I think we found out the secret behind why this worked out so well. And that's the next slide, right? And who are these people? Yeah. This, this, this was particularly interesting to me. This is a father and son who are the brains and the developers of these two projects right in the center of this little town. And the important thing is that they are residents themselves. They live there. They own the property. But this was not purely, or at least to me, it doesn't seem like, it wasn't purely for profit. Um, they had more altruistic, um, beneficial motives for the people who live there. And because they're residences, they are invested in it too. So it's quite a different situation than a developer buying or leasing a piece of property, building the biggest, tallest building they possibly can to maximize all of their profit and then just walking away. And that's what we see a lot of in Honolulu. We don't see yeah. that level of commitment. We see somebody who wants to essentially, as I said, maximize the profit that they can make off a piece of land. And that was not purely what was happening here in these two, this two phase project that we're looking at right now. Yeah, and that's definitely something to recommend once the rail will go through Kalihi, for example, right? Rather than buying these pieces of land from some local people, buying them out and then doing what you just described, why don't you find ways of clever, innovative financing and project developments to basically make the traditional owners the developers of the project. And that way it seems like a good recipe for success that then it works out because they're involved and they want to make sure, you know, and build with pride for their community, right? And, uh, you know, getting to the end of the show, getting to the next slide, which reminds us of some similarities again, we're seeing the Mauka in the back and the sunset, you see a lot of green. 
but this is that location over there in Bavaria, Germany. But let's go back to uh, Honolulu and back in the days when the first uh, sprawling out started, De Soto, next slide. And this is one of the first episodes of Hawaii 5.0 we're analyzing and researching. And these are of particular interest because you're once again, not just um, a professional observer of that, but also a personal eyewitness of this, right? Exactly. This is a particularly interesting episode and it's from the Hawaii 5 first or second season. And it's about a developer. It's about somebody who's protesting against uh, a tract, suburban tract homes being built. But the picture in the lower left is Steve McGarrett, the protagonist of the series, visiting the guy who was the developer in his home. And I actually watched that being filmed back then in 1968 because it was shot at a house that's just a few houses away from where I am right now, my family home. And in that particular picture, Steve and the developer are looking out over Honolulu, which is at that point being developed with lots of high rises, and they can see a building in the distance with a crane on top of it. So this is exactly what we're just talking about right here in the situation in this little town in Germany, development, protests against development, et cetera. And you pointed out that when this GBZ got started there, um, there were people who objected to it and thought it was too big and it was going to be overshadowing them, which of course I find laughable because it's only what, seven stories you said or not yeah. even that, maybe five. Um, okay. And that's not a very big building. <laughs> Certainly not by standards in Honolulu, it's not. No, absolutely not. So getting in to the end of the show, and I go to the next slide, second to last, uh, lots to learn from, we thought, and also the emerging generation who I took there out on an XP day, and they found it rather interesting and took some clues for their current studio project, which is addressing similar issues of trying to make a living uh, in dwelling in back in Honolulu, increasingly challenging. And last slide here is phasing out. Uh, once again, uh, we've been talking to Mayumi and John Hara about out west because they've been building West Oahu, uh, UH out there. And we've been talking about that uh, developments like Primitiva 1 uh, could do something similar as this project has been doing for Garrett's Reed. But it could do it, it should do it differently because here it's still Garrett's Reed and we got a lot of um you know a wall architectureness to the project which we wouldn't need in back in honolulu right this could be way more easy breezy strip lanai vegetation with a 12-month growing cycle uh, more um, um more aggressively um in incorporated so again uh, some more food for thought for potential <laughs> transit oriented developments the, your dog is cheering the end of the show that's right it's, they're, they're saying it's time to end the show <laughs> exactly so i think jay wants to adopt that for all the shows that the dog is the clock the alarm clock <laughs> <laughs> so with that uh thank you all and uh, look forward to see you again for another episode of our human human architecture bye bye bye